Hi viewers, welcome back again. This is HVAC Simplified and today the topic of the day will be thermostatic expansion valve where we are going to see what exactly is the function of this thermostatic expansion valve. Introduction to expansion devices, types of expansion devices, thermostatic expansion valve, main components, valve body, diaphragm, needle and seats, and springs. An expansion device is a refrigeration system normally serve this purpose. The thermodynamic fraction of expanding the liquid refrigerant from condenser pressure to evaporating pressure. The control function which may involve the supply of liquid to the evaporator at the rate at which it is evaporated. This determines the efficiency with which the evaporator surface is utilized. An expansion device is essentially a restriction offering resistance to flow so that the pressure drop resulting in throttling process. Types of expansion devices variable flow type constant flow type in a variable flow type of expansion device automatic expansion valve and thermostatic expansion valve in a constant flow type it's a capillary tube now let us see in details thermostatic expansion valve thermostatic expansion valve is designed to maintain a constant pressure in the evaporator the thermostatic expansion valve is designed to maintain a constant evaporator superheat. The thermostatic expansion valve operates on a seat and a needle, concept that is very similar to the automatic expansion valve. The main difference in this, the TEV close as the system loads is reduced while in AEV closes as the system loads increases. This is the sectional view of an expansion valve where you can see this is the bulk pressure which is the forces, the power shut, the power head, the drive from, the inlet of the refrigerant, the outlet of the refrigerant, superheated spring, valve body, check valve and the valve port and the outlet. This is how a thermostatic expansion cross-sectional view looks like. The main components are the valve body, the diaphragm, needle and seat and springs. Valve body, mechanic, brass or stainless steel. Hold components together, provides means to connect valves to the piping circuit, fastened by flare solder or flange has an inlet screen to stop any small particulars matters from entering valve moves the needle in and out of the seat in the response to the system loads changes flexes downwards to open the valve flexes upwards to close the valve made of a thin flexible stainless steel located on the top of the valve so basically these springs act as closing and opening for the refrigerant. The bulk pressure pushes down the bulk wall, the diaphragm. The spring isolator pushes up to close the valve. Evaporator pressure pushes to close the valve. Needle and the seats. Control refrigerant flow through the walls. Needle is pushed into the seats to reduce refrigerant flow to the evaporator made of stainless steel. The greatest pressure difference across the needle and the seat, the greatest amount of flow through the valve. The diaphragm pushes up. The needle pushes into the seat, closing the valve. The diaphragm pushes down. The needle pushes out of the seat opening the valve to allow the refrigerant to flow between them. 
The thermostatic expansion valves, needle and seed is controlled by three pressures. Evaporative pressure, spring pressure and the valve pressure. The evaporative pressure is one of the pressure that helps close the valve. It attempts to push the needle into the seed to reduce the flow of the refrigerant into the evaporator. The evaporative pressure can be taken from either the inlet or the outlet of the coil. Spring pressure. The spring pressure, also known as the superheat spring pressure, determines how much superheat the evaporator will open. The higher the spring pressure, the higher amount of the superheat. The spring comes back preset and should only be adjusted by a trained professional because improperly adjusting superheat springs can cause major system damage, including compressor failure. The spring pressure is the other pressure that closes the valve, reducing the amount of refrigerant flowing into the evaporator. It is very important and essential, and remember. It should be handled only by a trained technician or a trained qualified person. Bulb pressure. Let us see what is the bulb pressure. The bulb pressure is the only pressure that opens the valve. This pressure is generated inside a thermal bulb that is mounted at an outlet of the evaporator. The line that connects to the thermal bulb of the thermostatic expansion valve is called transmission line. The thermal bulb is refrigerant filled and for the most part flows as a pressure temperature relationship. It is the thermal bulb that sends the evaporator outlet temperature. The refrigerant in the thermal bulb is isolated from that of the system, so no mix takes place. The refrigerant in the bulb extracts a specific amount of pressure depending on its temperature that pushes down the diaphragm opposing the evaporator and the spring pressure. Let us see the spring. One of the valve closing forces acts to push the needle into the seat causing the valve to close. Spring pressure determines the evaporator superheat. Spring tension can be filled and adjusted. Only experienced field technicians should do the adjustment on the valve. The spring pushes up to rod to close the valve. When the spring moves towards upwards, the valve is closed, allowing the refrigerant to stop the flow to it. Thank you very much guys. Hope you like my video. Keep watching and do not forget to like, subscribe and share my channel. Bye bye.